Welcome to the Next Adventure podcast. This story is a little unsettling, particularly for those of you who are operating tourism-based businesses in Tasmania and those of you who earn income from your content creations and you are planning to go to Tasmania. I am interviewing two influencers, Harry Fisher from quite close to me here in Perth and Rob Parsons who is based in Tasmania and is quite well known for doing lovely travel adventure YouTube videos in Tasmania. And the Tasmanian authorities, the national parks, are basically, or have basically, slammed the door shut on influencers because they're making it so expensive and so complicated for influencers to go to Tasmania and share what is available in your beautiful state with the rest of the world. This is a lose-lose situation for everybody. Welcome to The Next Journey, the adventure travel podcast with me, Andrew St. Pierre White. I'm a prisoner of this hill. Harry from Far to Fork. Many of you will know his YouTube channel and his camp cooking. And we are looking forward again to getting together in the bush, mainly so Harry can cook me something. Nice Absolutely. No, nice <laughs> I get camera tips, you get cooking tips. It's great. Okay. I am... I have just cancelled my plans to visit Tasmania because of two things that have happened, and <clears throat> before we and what happened to Harry is one of the reasons why I have actually cancelled. So we're going to get onto that and discuss what's going on because it's not very good for Tasmania, not very good for tourism, and not very good for YouTubers who earn income from creating content. But I do want to thank our sponsors, Zippo. Do you know that Zippo don't just make those lovely little brass lighters for lighting cigarettes and campfires? They also make inserts that are available directly from their website. They replace the traditional paraffin lighter fluid burner with a butane, little butane firebox. So whereas the old uh, Zippo was really good for lighting a campfire, as long as the wind wasn't howling, it could be blowing but not howling, the butane liner, to me, it's a game changer. I absolutely love it. And they also make some lovely fire starters. So, Harry, you actually introduced me to I these. I did. These, these, they <laughs> are genuinely so good. I've been using them for, I mean, 20 years, and I'm, I'm only 35, so. Um, oh, really? <laughs> now, I've I had one forever. I've been using Zippos for longer than that, but I love these new butane. I love it's, these new little butane. Are they quite new? Have they been around for a long time? I don't actually know when they were released, but I completely agree. The biggest problem with the old lighters was, of course, the fuel evaporates over yes, time. And secondly, as you said, not, not completely windproof. Yep. These things, I mean, I left one in my van, for example, for, for 10 months, and I flicked it open, it lit perfectly. It's, it's got a jet flame. You can hold it upside down. You can do all that kind of stuff. It's... It's all, basically all I use. And fun fact, they fit perfectly in the little coin pocket of your Levi jeans. That's actually what they are originally designed for in Levi jeans. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't wear Levi's anymore, but that's quite cool. Onto yeah. our, our subject. So, good place to store them. <laughs> I have cancelled my trips to Tasmania because of the... How, how, can, we, how can we put this... No, I don't want to say... The bullshit... It's the yeah. bureaucratic nonsense. It's painful. So tell me what happened to you. You you decided you want to go to Tassie yes. to do a trip as a YouTuber yes. that earns money from their work yes. by various ways. What happened to you? What did you have to do? 15 months ago, I decided to drive an old van from the top of Cape York, northernmost point in Australia, uh, to the southernmost point in Australia, which is, of course, in Tasmania. Um, so I did. I, I bought an old van and I drove it all the way down. And uh, two weeks before I was due to leave to Tasmania. Now, bear in mind, I've done all the other videos, the whole rest of Australia. Haven't paid a cent for a permit. Um, it's been really easy to film. You fly in, you turn your camera on, you make your video, you leave. The, the state gets free marketing. I get to go and, you know, make an income. Everyone's happy. There's not, you know, if, and if you're irresponsible, you should be 
susceptible to fines because you're putting this information on the internet. You're putting everything that you do on the internet. And therefore, if, if, I've, if I've done the wrong thing, come after me. Absolutely. No problem. I've got no problem with that. Tasmania took a different approach. I didn't know about this until I saw... Um, it was a friend of a friend. And so um, Rob, who I believe you're going to interview, um, Rob Parsons, he, he his issues um, are how I found out about all this. I had a letter from Parks basically said that I'd been operating without... Um like illegally inside the reserves that they manage because I didn't have a business license. Um, because what I had been doing, taking my hobby, which was making YouTube videos um, in the beginning, which I wasn't making any money. And then I started to generate ad revenue, um, basically monetizing the content that I make. And therefore this was a massive infringement and considered running a business in reserves at Parks and Wildlife Manage without a license. So they uh, issued me a um, basically a letter that said that if there was no action on my behalf, they'd be taking me to court. So I went in to see them and uh, address the issue with them. And basically it seems that they have no system in place for YouTubers or small content creators. They have one commercial filming license, which is $440 per project. But for what we do to go out consistently making videos every other week, um, it's just impossible to do that and completely unaffordable. So um, they, what they did was they issued me um, an application for a business license, which is the exact same as um, like what tourism groups would, would apply for if they were operating in, in the reserves that they manage which can take up to 90 days as well. So it just shows the, um, basically the inefficiency of parks and wildlife to manage content creators because one they don't have a system in place that uh, even caters for people who want to operate here that live here and two they could never justify that 90-day clause on people who want to come um, from overseas or, or even interstate to film content to monetize because that it's just impossible most people don't book a holiday 90 days out let alone get a business license so that they can film and, and monetize their content. Rob was fined massive amounts of money for filming in his home state. And it turns out the thing that he was guilty of in, in the Parks and Wildlife Services um, mind was filming without a permit as well as a bunch of other little tiny indiscretions. Um, and I'm not going to go into the details of that. I think he's much better placed to do that. I do think that some of them were absolutely ridiculous. In fact, I think almost all of them were ridiculous. I, I mean, I watched your, your stuff in Tasmania and thought, wow, where am I going to go? I need to contact Rob. Where am I going to go? Where, he, he, that was my reaction to your show. Yeah, I want to go to some of those places that you've been. So I am I am atypical. I am typical, I think, of of anybody wanting to travel to anywhere. Yeah. But now, if you had somebody giving you a set of tires, no, no, let's let's no, let's not not um, giving you a lighter and saying, please use this lighter. They're not giving you any money necessarily, but they're just saying, gift. Now, that lighter has intrinsic value. Therefore, that shot of you at your campfire is monetized. Mm. It, it is actually monetized because they've given you something and you're giving them something back. It might not be money, but it is certainly value. Yeah. So even if anybody in visiting Tasmania, if you have been given a product in return for, yes, chuck some pictures on your Instagram, no mm. matter whether your Instagram following is 20 people or 20,000, you may not do it, which means whatever systems they have in place. Yeah, it's completely unpoliceable. That's the problem. And this is why I highlighted everything that Parks did wrong because they're just not ready and not willing to accept that it's something that they're capable of managing. I mean, uh, that's the biggest issue I have with it, that they pointed fingers at my maid and I for making videos. Um, Were you found out because you had transgressed some rules? 
Yeah, very, very. There was some education that was needed because um, Parks and Wildlife have a, a legislation book that is massive. It's probably bigger than the Bible, and it's full of all of these rules that, as users of the parks, we're uh, meant to know every single one of these rules. And trust me, there's some insane ones that you would never guess. Um, for example, snapping uh, a dead branch is an infringement if that dead branch is inside a World Heritage area. Um, so you think like, be careful where you're walking because, you know, you don't want to break a rule from just accidentally walking on a stick that you, but yeah, there was some stuff that I'd done in my videos that I was not aware were infringements. And this was part of the, um, case that Parks and Wildlife had put together, um, on me along with the operating in, uh, in the reserves that they manage without a business license. And right. to be honest, I think majority of what they were going for was that business license thing because they thought, well, if he needs a business license to operate in our reserves, then he has to get one through us. So if we want to put a leash around his neck, he's going to have to come and play by our rules, which I don't have a problem with because everything that I've done has basically been, you know, leave no trace. I'm, I'm a pretty good advocate for Tassie. I love teaching people about nature and history and all of these things, but there might be a line there that's drawn because also what a lot of what I do is kind of um, historical and some of the places that I visit, they might not want encouraging people to, to visit as well. So I suddenly find out about this and I'm 14 days to the day away from leaving. So I look it up and I go, oh, what am I going to do? I've spent so much time and effort in, you know, trying to complete this trip. I really don't want to cut it short for the sake of having to get a permit. We've all got permits for things. You've done the canning stock route. You've got permits for different trips. No problem. I fully understand that. And I fully understand in some states that if you want to film in national parks, you do need a permit. I think in New South Wales, it's 50 bucks for the year to film commercially. Um, Tassie's got a different system where not just national parks, every single bit of public land is subject to this permit system. I'm talking about a beach. If you're a wedding photographer and you go out and you want to take photos or video of someone, of a newlywed couple on the beach, you need to spend three weeks getting the permit ready. You need to spend $440 per wedding, so per project. Um, and you need public liability insurance that specifically names Tasmania's crown um, on the policy, and they've got specific wording that you need for that, and that's $2,500 a year, $2,560 a cost for the year. So if you're a wedding photographer, you need to now add $2,500 over the thing, so say you do 10 weddings a year, you add $250, bucks, plus your 440 plus all the buggering around for every single time you need to do, 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 do a wedding. So those newlyweds are now paying an extra 700 odd dollars per shoot in order to pay for these permits. Um, and the reasoning that they've said is that they want to make sure that you're not doing the wrong thing. And we'll, we, I guess we can go back to that because as I said, we're putting it on the internet. If we're doing the wrong thing, punish us. But I don't think that we need to run everything past bureaucratic organization before we do it. I just, it's, it's, it's infuriating. Anyway, so I get in touch with them and I said, look, I haven't got my insurance yet. I've got 14 days till I leave. You say I need 21. Is there any chance we can expedite this? I really need it to go through. And they said, look, tell us exactly where you're going. And I said, Tasmania. And they said, where? I said, I don't know. I don't know what the weather's doing. I don't know whether it's good produce. I don't know where I'll find a good campsite. There are a whole bunch of variables. I'll be asking locals. I'll be traveling with locals. I'll be walking into the local pub, sitting down, ordering a beer and saying, mate, where can I go and catch some trout? Or where's a good campsite? Or do you know where I can get, you know, whatever. Is there a little truffle farm near here so I can go and make some fun local produce? And because the, the, whole, pro, the whole purpose of my, my trip was um, to showcase Tasmania's produce. And I guess I can go into that in a little bit later, but anyway, so that's what I said to them. I said, my, my, the purpose of this is to show how different it is traveling in Tassie because it's small and you can 
well, you can refill every day or two with ingredients and fun things and, and support local economies and, and showcase the, the cool things about Tassie. I'll tell them all this. And they went, no, but exactly where are you going? I, I can't tell you. Or we really need to know. Well, well I can't. I said, oh, we're going to need to get, get comment from every single region in Tassie to see if you can go. I said, okay, how many regions are there? And they said, three. I said, fine. I'm doing a lap of Tassie anyway. Any way we go about it, even if I gave you an itinerary, it's going to be all three. And, oh, yeah, I guess it will be. But, you know, can you, can you just give us... I'm not giving you dates. I'm not... Just get me permission to film for one week in all three, in all three locations, all three zones, and we'll go from there. Finally, it gets through. Okay, yeah, we think we can do that. Okay, cool. Now, there is an exemption that if you're, if you are doing this for the benefit of Tassie, so if you think, if you can show them, hey, I'm going to be, you know, highlighting your state, helping your tourism, helping your local economy, they will waive the fee. They didn't waive the fee. They charged me full fee. $440 for the permit, plus two and a half thousand for the insurance. So their conclusion was that you were not helping the economy by the media that you were presenting exactly which is patently incorrect Abs that's exactly what they said okay yeah right. so i said guys i really need you to tell me if you are going to get it through in two weeks because if you're not i need to start cancelling things now i'm I, I, and i won't come to tassie and this is i think where it hit home because they said well you know we need to see if you're going to be doing the right thing by our state and i said that's fine I'd like you to look at it from another perspective. What happens if you don't let me go to Tassie? I've got all up across platforms 185,000 odd followers. I've been telling them for over a year that I'm going to be doing top to bottom in this cool old van. And if at the last minute it gets cut short, what am I supposed to say? Oh, I just changed my mind. It had nothing to do with Tasmania. Of course I'm not going to say that. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to say, hey, I tried to go to Tassie. They wouldn't let me because of this stupid permit system. I didn't have time. And unfortunately, that's off the table now. My car needs to now go to South Australia and it needs to go home because I've got plans. Um, so Tassie will just get wiped off the list. And I'll go to the southernmost point in Victoria and I'll go to the Flinders Ranges. And I think that seemed to be the best thing for at least getting this thing through. Despite paying all the fees, despite going jumping through all the hoops and getting all the insurance, and I mean, I think my permit's eight pages long, and I had to fill out a five-page form to to get it in the first place. And then they said, "Well, you know, this is not enough information." I was like, five pages." So I had to send email after email after email, explaining how I was doing the right thing by their state. So I did a whole thing about how I'm taking an, an, an empty esky approach. So I'm going in with an empty fridge, no ingredients. And everything that I cook will be inspired by Tassie's best produce. And I'll be talking about how, how different it is traveling in Tassie compared to traveling in WA. In WA, you go, okay, I'm not going to get anything for the next eight days, 10 days, 15, 20 days, whatever it is, if you're doing a really remote trip. It's a completely different way of travel. You pack really efficiently. You, you pre-do everything. You pre-make meals. You, you get, you know, you, you, you get it down to a fine art. Tassie, no. You just pull into that little market that you're going to pass the next day. So and, you, and you go and get some fun ingredients and you make dinner that night. Sounds it's, fantastic. It's fantastic. And it's so colloquial. And, and, and how could they possibly say that that isn't advanced? I don't get it. So... And, and, and that's, that's not me doing that for them. That's me doing it because I love Tassie. I had my honeymoon in Tassie. I've done a lap of Tassie before. I love Tasmania. I actually think the Tasmanians are the friendliest people in Australia. And I have to say, everyone I dealt with at Parks and Wildlife were really nice. But they are dealing with a system that's broken. They're dealing with a system that's designed for TV presenters. So for, sorry, for TV crews. So this gets me onto this question. Where, do, where is the line drawn between somebody that is going to create content for their own ends i.e they're going to earn some income from it yeah uh, and where where is that line drawn do you think at the moment if you earn money at all if you earn money at all from your content so if you 
if you are monetized on YouTube. Even even a even a tiny little channel that earns eight dollars fifty a month yeah. on their YouTube channel, they would need to go and spend thousands of dollars to go to Tasmania to take a single photograph. Correct. Is that what you're saying? Yes. If they put it on their channel, yes. Yeah. I can go with my wife and go to Tassie on holiday and take all the photos and videos I want. If one of those touches my channels, I'm screwed. You're, you're contributing. You're contravening. Yeah, that's right. it's it's almost like I've stolen the footage of Tassie. Uh, okay. But look, I could go to hip camps all the way around Tassie and not touch a national park. Uh, but if I film on a main road, <clears throat> I'm contravening it. If I film on a beach, I'm contravening it. So I, I can only film on private property in Tassie. So that's the only way to get around it is to only film on private property. Crown land, <laughs> which is supposed to be, you know, federal. Yes. No. No. Or could, that, that comes under the PWS, Parks and Wildlife Service, um, control. And I'm not allowed to film Do that. Do you think that the people in Tasmania, giving them the benefit of the doubt, actually understand what it means to make money on... On, on social media. It's not like a television production where you have a crew of 12 or a crew of 20 and you stay there for a week and you're intensely shooting for a big production where you've got sponsors advertising and the production is worth thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. As compared to a, like yourself, you're similar to me, single YouTuber, you pay for your fuel. Yeah. Okay, you pay for your van, it's your vehicle, mm -hmm. you get all the way there, you pay for the ferry, if you pay for the campsites, you pay for the food that you put in your esky, you pay for everything, and in doing that, you're supporting the economy in your small way, Yes. and then sharing it and promoting the economy in a massive way. Yes. Now that massive is all relative. Mm. For, you're a medium-sized YouTuber. Your yeah. influence is not insignificant. We know what happens when certain things go on our channels. Um, you, you more so than me. But I, I know for, for sure that I've, I've gone to places, put it on my channel, and they are constantly being told, oh, we, we saw this in Fire the Fort, we saw this in Fire the Fort, we saw this in Fire the Fort. And, yes. and, that, and, they, and they email me and they say, thank you so much for coming. Yes. And I didn't ask, you know, it's a campsite or whatever it is and they're over the moon now i just don't understand how me going there could give a negative impact and again if i was doing the wrong thing i'm i'm fully open to fines as is anyone else in fact i'm probably more open to fines because i document it so do you think that their reaction it, it's not a it's, it's been like that for a while 2000 it went in so it's a 23-year-old so, so it's law. a 23-year-old law based on television productions. Exactly. I'll give you a little bit of a story. The same occurred <clears throat> about the same time in African national parks. And I, in 2015, went to Zambia and Malawi. I contacted Zambia Tourism in, in Lusaka and Malawi Tourism. And I told them what I was doing. And I was doing it for South African television and YouTube. Again, very small budget, no big crew and everything like this. And they said you would have to uh, sign these forms agreeing to certain things. No problem with that at all. And you would have to hire a local guide every single day. Oh, that's going to be a bit of a stretch on the budget. And it's a thousand US dollars a day. What? Right. A thousand US dollars to be in the national parks. But they are thinking their mental thoughts were BBC, documentaries, big broadcasters, yeah. you can understand that. I, I, and okay. look, and if you're filming a, if you're filming a BBC documentary, $1,000 a day is nothing. Is nothing. So I explained to them what I was doing. And they, and they said, we completely understand, but we have no machinery. We have nothing in place to... The, to so we, we can't help you. So I said, what would happen, and I'm not saying it's going to, that I go anyway... And I release it on, on television. Are you going to come after me? And he smiled at me and said, well, I heard the smile on his phone. It was over the phone. And he said, no, Mr. White. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're really not going to come. You go and do your thing. I then went and the same thing with Malawi. I got a telephone call from the High Commissioner in London because I was living in London in 2015 and I'd gone over to shoot it and gone back to the UK. Okay. The High Commissioner phoned me. And he said, thank you so much for what you've just done. <laughs> Isn't, yeah. That's the difference 
between understanding and they like Tasmania is acting now they don't understand and perhaps what we should do is help them understand mm. the kind of income that is actually earned because maybe they think you're earning millions and they want a slice of that yeah I don't think I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt I don't think they're after it for the money no are they after it because they want to make sure that you don't present do the wrong thing and fly your drone in a national park yes. for example do you think that's their main i don't understand why they've suddenly tried to prosecute us and when i say us i mean small youtubers well you know one man band production let's just go one man band productions yeah one or two hmm. um for social media i don't understand why they've suddenly turned around and said you're breaking all these laws, unless people actually are breaking laws, that's totally fine. But in terms of, I don't understand why they're saying you're filming without a permit or you're doing this or that. It doesn't make sense to me that, that they are cracking down on it. I think they could have taken a Malawi approach and said, just go and do it and we won't prosecute you. That would have been a much better thing for them to do. But instead, they've decided to go all bureaucratic and enforce it. Well, my aim with this video is to assist them in coming to terms with this new with this new it's not new but it's mm. new in their eyes thing called content creator yeah. and content creators that actually do it for a living and in return these these wildlife areas get support get visitors they spend mm. they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars they all do it on bringing in and inspiring visitors come and see our wonderful places our wonderful places that we manage we look after we are very proud of please come and the best single way of doing that is to help youtubers do their job well yeah to me it's yeah. a no it's a no-brainer because it doesn't cost them a cent yeah all it costs them is I'm aware of you and let me try and help you do your job well. If you mm. break the rules, I'm sorry, there are rules. Yeah. I'm not going to change them for you just because, but wouldn't it be great if they actually contacted you and said, okay, Rob, next time, what are we going to do next time? Because what happened here now we're not happy with, mm. what are we going to do next time? That's what they should have said. Yeah, because if they'd understood, it said, "Hey, uh, we love what you do for the state, but there are a few rules that you're probably not aware that you've broken, um, yes. and you're also going to need a business license, which we're going to fast track for you to keep you keep you putting out content because we we love what you do for the state." Would have been that simple. Now I understand that the people at PWS that is their job, and I but I think that someone's made a decision at some point to crack down and they've done this to a few people and I don't think it was a good move. It's also recently been in Parliament where they've, they've been discussing this in Parliament recently. The current member, current minister, uh, so the opposition member has come forward and said, what do you think about this? This seems ridiculous to us that you're charging people who are promoting our state and prosecuting them and making them out to be villains when all they're doing is showing what a fantastic place we live. And his response. And that's what we love doing about interesting places. We yeah. love showing it off. Exactly. That's our main goal. It's our main goal. There's no ulterior motive here. None. So the, the current ministers got up and said, oh, well, you know, how do we know what they're doing unless we check on them before they, they do it? And, you know, then to check on them, it's going to cost a lot of money and resources. Therefore, we need to charge them to check on them. And I just thought, you want to check on us, jump on the channel and have a little watch. If we break any rules, let us know afterwards. That's going to cost you nothing. That will cost you absolutely nothing. Get someone. Yeah, sure. It might, you know, you can have, you know, I don't care if you employ someone just to watch YouTube videos on Tasmania. Make sure they're not doing the wrong thing. Yeah. And if they are doing the wrong thing, find them. Yeah. It's very clear about drone rules. Drone rules apply to everyone. Yeah. And you can get an exemption. And that's fine. So you, I, I would be happy um, if they said, okay, you can fly a drone if you do this course, which they, they actually asked me to get a CASA license, which is $2,000 and takes a week. Yes. Um, and I thought, well, I'm not doing that. Um, I don't have the time and I'm not spending $2,000 to fly a toy. Um, you know, yes. <laughs> but if, if it was a, a, a bigger than two kilo drone, a commercial one, fully understand. But to fly a normal recreational drone that I can fly everywhere else in Australia with my free license yes. that we all have to get, yes. 
no problem at all. I fully understand that. And if they said to me, hey, you can do it if you follow all these regulations and pay, say, 50 bucks, I'd do it. I'd pay the 50 bucks sure. and I'd be able to fly. And I'd, you know, if the ranger comes up, i show, here you go, sir, here's my thing. Now, I should also say, after paying near, uh, roughly $3,000 to... Uh, in, in permits and, and whatnot. Um, I then went to Cradle Mountain, which is, sorry, not Cradle Mountain, um, Wine Glass Bay um, fr um, and Freycinet National Park, which is beautiful. It's, it's, it's the postcard of, of Tassie. Um, $47 entry to the National Park. My $440 apparently doesn't cover that. So you've got to pay, you've still got to pay all your park fees, all your access fees, all your camping fees, as well as the permit. <clears throat> I was there for an it's, hour. It's, it's, it's... Um, do, you, do you think something like a simple roster where if you are a, uh, operating a content creation business uh, that you can register with them because they're worried about policing? So uh, they might be saying, oh, um, we won't know what they're doing. Well, I'm saying, well, it's very, very, very easy. It's so easy to find out what they're doing. All you need to do is sit at your desk and watch their channel. And you mm. will know what they're doing. You review so the it, work after they've applied to do it. Plus, you give them the guidelines of which they can operate within as well. So that way, yeah. everybody who's applied for a commercial filming license uh, is going to put out the content, which is, in effect, the evidence of the agreement that they came to with Parks and Wildlife. So there should be you know, no, no reason for them to um, ever think otherwise that they would be breaking any rules or, or, or doing any more infringements. I mean, the simple fact that what we do is documented, self-documented uh, is more than enough uh, support that they need on their behalf. And, you know, innocent until proven guilty by all means. Um, who is going to risk um, losing their business license to create content over some ridiculous things like lighting fires in, uh, you know, World Heritage areas or other type of infringements that can happen? I almost think that they see extreme examples of this, like that man who jumped out of his own airplane to get um, in, this, in the States, and apparently he's going to prison for it. I don't know if you know the story. No. He, he was flying a Telecraft, and he said he had an engine failure and had cameras strapped all over the airplane, had cameras strapped to his parachute, and uh, had a 360 camera on a stick, and leapt out of the aircraft and then posted this thing on YouTube. Mm. Sensational. He, he didn't have an engine failure. He just wanted, and he wrecked a lovely little airplane, and mm. uh, he's going to prison for it. And that is what—that is the <clears throat> extreme end of uh, YouTubers. And maybe yeah. they look at that and they say, "Well, we can't have that happening." That this is the yeah, this is, uh, well, yeah, self policing the there, for sure. But but they're well aware of what I do and and the effect that I have and. The only reason that they might not want to encourage what I do is purely because of the fact that my videos increase the amount of visitors in the reserves that they manage. And you might say, well, that's exactly what they want because that makes them more revenue. But that's not actually the, fact, the truth. The truth is that Parks and Wildlife would prefer less visitors in the reserves that they manage. And ideally what they want is to people to only go to reserves that are streamlined. For example, the uh, Overland Track, um, the 65 kilometer walk that leads from Cradle Mountain and finishes at Lake Sinclair. Um, places like Frenchman Cap now, they've got these booking systems in place. What they don't want is people who, within their own rights, are going out and exploring and creating itineraries to their own desire, and which in effect has, um, you know, free camping and potentially, um, you know, lighting of a small fire to cook dinner. And I mean, it's just basic stuff that people have been doing for, for hundreds of years. But what they're trying to do now is to basically stop that. But there's no law or legislation that says that you can't do that. But that is what they're trying to do. Interesting. Mm. So it's Very not, I mean, this, this message came up the other day. This question came up in Parliament the other day when Christy Johnson, um, a, an independent MP, asked the Minister of Parks. She said directly, what is your answer to the massive amount of revenue that will be lost in Tasmania due to the fact that we have these strict um, rules in line for content creators in Tasmania? At the moment, people can't even go to the beach and film content 
for cash because that's crown land without a business license. And the answer that the, the guy said, Roger Yentz or whatever his name was, said that in the past, the promotion of Tasmania has been an important aspect of our visitors. However, we have these rules in place to protect the areas and blah, 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 which I can understand from a world heritage point of view or a national park point of view, that's completely fine. I don't care about those areas. I want this other 750 reserves that Parks and Wildlife manage that they've been given custodianship of that I still can't even go to and film for, for monetization, including the beach. Like it's just ludicrous the amount of control they have and they blanket the same effect on world heritage as they do for the beach because it's crown land. It's reserves that they manage or crown land. And that's not fair. They need to divvy it up. They need to say, all right, well, World Heritage Areas and National Parks are at a higher value, so therefore we have a higher set of rules. If you want to film in those areas, we're going to be very, we're going to look at your application a lot harder than what we would is, is if you just wanted to go into a regional reserve, which forestry used to occur in or mining activities used to occur in, or they're a lower grade value, you know, but they don't. Everything's blanketed under the same thing, and it's a, just a control thing that they have. This is, this is my suggestion, and tell me if I'm barking up the wrong tree here. You register as a YouTuber, so if you want to go into national parks, and perhaps this is a, it could be a good pattern for, for all the states. If you are a YouTuber and you do travel basic, basic travel shows, okay, tra that means you're qualified to <clears throat> be one of those people that actually bring people into our state and into our parks, spending money for petrol and all of the things that they do yes. in our state and parks. Yes you then are on a list okay so that if we want to police you we've got a list yeah we it's really easy just go onto their channel and on that channel you might have an instagram you might have the pro, your your two primary socials yeah and so now this makes it really easy to be policed yes if we are seen as doing something that is illegal fires drones whatever it happens to be driving recklessly over stabilized dunes doing stupid stuff where it's a bad example now we're not the only ones doing this kind of thing we are actually as youtubers i think more sensitive to this oh, because far more. we know we are very harshly judged very harshly judged yes so we're very careful generally speaking on what we do and particularly what we share and if you come back and you say you point to us and say that was out of line a it's education we can then share that with our viewers yes saying i learned this it happened to me two years ago we had actually camped on a west coast beach and we had thought we had actually entered the area where we were allowed to camp and the ranger came and said no it's actually two k's or three k's or whatever it was up the beach and he said um you're not supposed to and i, and I apologized to him and i said I, I thought we were because we had driven and he said no, and he showed me the map, and I said, you're right, you were very sorry. And he said, I'm not going to find you, but I'm just going to give you guys a, a, a warning. And I appreciated that, and he was, he was quite reasonable and yeah. quietly in his rights because they're controlling access to the beach and they're controlling erosion and, and all of those things that are damaging the beach and things, so I completely understand it. Yeah. The point I'm making is that it was okay for me to share that with my viewers Yeah. because I learned something, they can now learn something. Yeah. And we don't need to be charged for it. If we want to fly a drone, then I agree that there have to be certain stipulations. We have to understand that, for example, I don't know if you agree with me, but if I'm on the beach and I hear no. over my head, it's not on. No. It's just not on. No. Okay. So, the, the, so <laughs> as much as I would like to get the footage, I, I, even a public beach, I won't fly a drone no. on a public beach on a public beach and we did work one thing and there was nobody else around and i popped the drone it was completely legal popped the drone into the air got two shots landed it yeah it didn't fly over anybody else because that and i i believe we are conscientious i, but I we're agree not maybe all conscientious there has to be a way of you saying to us yes we want you to come to our state in fact we're even gonna help you yes we don't we shouldn't be paying for the national park fees <laughs> Maybe camping fees, but and I, what, what I'm saying is that this is a give and take. Mm. Help us promote your state and we will promote your state. Yeah, or I'm happy to pay for the national park fee 
I'm if I'm not also paying for the permit and the insurance and the everything else. A absolutely correct. We're, we're quite happy. We're actually, park fees don't worry me. Couldn't, I don't couldn't. mind paying the park fees. And it, look, it's yeah. a beautifully maintained park and I, I, I thought it was on the spicy end, but I was also, I paid it before and I'll pay it again on holiday. No worries. That yeah. does, doesn't, doesn't bother me, but it's, it was the, it was the extra little chip. It was the extra little cut and you're just yeah. thinking, oh, really? More money. Yeah. You're going to take, take yeah. more money. Yeah. And, and I tell you what, it, it didn't put me in a good mood when I did that piece. No, you know, when I'm going imagine. up there, and I was... not good for you guys in Tasmania. It's not good for you when your presenter is actually quite ticked off because their wallet is considerably lighter now yeah. than it was in the morning. That, and they're promoting your state and your economy. And they were cheeky enough to say, would you consider putting thank you to Parks and Wildlife Service at the end of the video. And I, no. said, I said, you can put thanks to Fire the Fork at the end of your videos because I'm sponsoring you. So, say that again. <laughs> they said what? They said, would you consider putting thank you to Tasmanian Parks and Wildlife Service at the end of your videos? And I said, if you give it to me all for free, you make it really easy for me, yeah, I'll consider it. If, if I'm paying for it, if I'm going through this whole rigmarole and I'm supporting your state, you can put at the end of your videos sponsored by Fire to Fork. Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm giving you a lot more than you're giving me. The, this, is not a, 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 this is not an equitable solution. So I, my challenge to you, Harry, is this. You, uh, you're busy editing those videos now. I, am, I yeah. want you to do what Parks and Wildlife asked you to do. At the end of the video, you say thanks to Tasmania Parks and Wildlife for charging me and then put the bill. <laughs> It's a good idea, actually. <laughs> You're thanking them. Yeah. You're agreeing to thank them. Yep. But the caveat is, thank you for charging me what? Three thousand. Three thousand. Each dollars. A bit more than three thousand. Yeah. Because that's what it actually costs out of your money. So those are, a lot of a lot of people will think I think that YouTubers earn a fortune from advertising <laughs> revenue. <laughs> no, we, we we really don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Casey Neistats that earn a fortune. Absolutely, and yeah. And the Marcus Brownies yeah. that earn a fortune yeah. from YouTube. Yeah. The ir irony of it all is there's massive amounts. There's 350,000 hectares of land that they manage that has been given to forestry. It was signed over in 2020, so it's on the chopping board, that they still manage. Now, I can't go in there and film a video commercially and put it on YouTube, but forestry can chop it down. It's just mental. Like, how does that add up? <clears throat> how does they, that add up? What they need to do is they need to divvy it all up or, or at least be a little bit more flexible about the commercial filming licenses. Because at the end of the day, what is being filmed in World Heritage and what is being filmed in national parks are areas that they capitalise on through the sales of parks passes. And last year alone, they made um, something like $7 million dollars in parks passes for Cradle Mountain. One reserve. One. They had a quarter of a million people go in at $28 for a day pass, and they expect that to rise by 60000 per year in the future years. Right. It's, it's crazy. And, and what do they do with that money? They build huge eyesore visitor centres in World Heritage areas and disrupt the complete sense of the wilderness. So they're, you know, you want to talk about people who mismanage the areas that they're meant to be looking after. Well, they need to look in the mirror because it's them. My big worry about this is that this is Australia and uh, bureauc bureaucracy is a hobby for a lot yeah. of people. And yeah. unnecessarily, this could be made so unnecessarily complicated, which is probably what they're going to try and do because complexity employs people where it could be so simple and so straightforward and so easy to monetize for them and control for them. Oh. And for us, we sign up, we're doing this. There you go. We're done. That's yeah. all we have to do. And, uh, and relax and go oh. and inspire people to go to Tassie. Anyway, well, I think they forget, you know, as well that they can't stop people making videos. They can stop people making videos for monetary gain, but they cannot police people making videos if they're not doing anything wrong and it's not monetized.
how do they stop people uh, even for monetary gain how do they police that well i mean they would assume that through say in my example i had patreon um t-shirts and then also i had my uh the youtube which was creating revenue through ads so that was classed as operating a business uh, uh, yes but, um, but uh, many people won't they might have a, a young youtube channel where they cannot monetize and they also can't sell t-shirts at this point yeah. because they're just starting out yes, they so don't need a license which where's is the line where this is my question where is that line well this... i guess you, i guess you'd have to say that the line is when you start to to make money so as soon as you make your first 10 cents you've got to go in and see parks and wildlife and, and get your license. Or the moment somebody gives you something and says, put this on screen for me, won't you? Here's a nice lighter for you. Go and put it on screen for you. Yeah, that's it. That's the, yeah. this is what I'm saying. It's such a gray area. Mm. It's such a gray area. My uncle yeah. has a, my uncle has a, a, a tire business. Can you put a sticker on the side of your car for us? Sure. And then we'll help you balance your tires when you need to. Sure. Uh, uh, stop you can't take pictures of your car in tassie no 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 no. your uncle gave you some free tire services and you've got a sticker yeah. on, the, on your windscreen yeah exactly where's the line the time that i was there if i just took my youtube earnings quick maths it would cover the spirit of tasmania ticket the ship that puts it in a nutshell that's what it would actually cover that's yeah. the truth that's the truth yeah. of of and, and most youtubers are your size my size we're not massive uh, but we do make a living from our youtube channel so we do <clears throat> earn a living yeah to support our families yeah and work very very hard yeah we we like our work yes it's a vocation but it's imagine if we enjoyed our jobs oh no that would be that horrible would, thing that would be a terrible thing to do yeah how shameful for you <laughs> you're not a real man if you enjoy your job <laughs> <laughs> I had, I had someone, yeah, I had someone say that to me. They said, um, they said, oh, you, you're obviously, you know, um, they said, if you're not, I think his words were, if you're not losing a little bit of your soul, you're not working hard enough for your family. I just thought, what an absolute load of shit. Imagine it, imagine being annoyed that someone enjoyed their job. That is the, that is, I, I feel sorry. I get that similar kind of thing. That's, that's quite Oh man, you're, you're going to stay miserable for the rest of your life. If that's yeah. your attitude, you will be miserable for yeah. your entire life because you feel a certain level of um, of self congratulation. Give yourself suffering. that yeah. in your suffering, as opposed <sighs> to trying to go beyond. And actually, a lot of people out there, guys, there are ways of loving your job. Yes. And if you love your job, you will not spend a minute working your entire life. Yeah. So, some bits suck. Some bits. <laughs> some bits but suck. That's the, that's the you, you still have to do your book work yeah. and you still have to do paperwork and whatever. But that's fine. It, that's just life. I, I consider that more like life admin than, um, you know, which, which we all work. have. Do you, do you, when you're sitting on a beach and you, I can imagine your, your dog's there and, 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 and you've got the smell coming off your stove and you yeah. must think, I'm the luckiest son of a bitch in the world. I'm oh, working. I'm it's, working here. You must get that. Oh, I, I almost have imposter syndrome sometimes where I think I'm, I'm sort of sitting there and it's, and it's just magic and I'm waiting for a phone call from my old boss to go, all right, mate, you've had your bloody holiday. Come on back into work. We've, we've just taken all the money out of your bank um, because, you know, like as if, as if this whole house of cards is going to collapse because it's too good to be true. How the hell can I be making a living doing such a fantastic thing with my life if... Um, I asked my wife. She's a she's a, a doctor, um, so she you know she's very much the same attitude towards her work. She loves it. I said, if we had ten billion dollars, what would you do? She said, work three days a week. And she said, you? And I said, I'd put out one video a month, and it'd be higher quality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I yeah. do. Yeah, I can I can understand that. I remember the first time. I don't know if it was the first time. It's one of those times. It was probably about in the year 2000, somewhere around there. I, I measured my entire by What car was I driving at the time? Oh, must have been 2000. I, I do the same. You do the same. Yeah. And I had my white G-Wagon and um, I was in, a, in Zululand and I was in, this, in this, this, this riverbed and we were the vehicles were coming down. I said, okay, drive up. I'm going to get some shots of you coming down the thing and then crossing the river at a low level. I'm going to put the camera really low. And I was waiting, standing there. 
listening to the engines in the distance, the birds were all around me, I'm in the middle of bloody nowhere, and my mates were driving the vehicles and driving them down. And I thought, it's Wednesday morning, and I'm doing this. Yeah. What did I do to deserve this? Yes. And I kind of still doing that very same thing. Yeah. You know. And there are sort of two parts to it because lots of people try and be YouTubers as well. And it doesn't work for everyone. It doesn't work for most people. Why don't you think it works for most people? One is they're trying to be something that they're not and they're trying to emulate content that they like. And I don't think that there's any issue with taking parts of other people's content and saying, I love the way you did that. I remember seeing you know, someone did a split screen thing when they were cooking and I thought, I'm using that in that. my edit. Yeah. Or, you know, I'll, I'll see bits of your, your cinematography and I go, I love that, or I'm taking that, or just, you know, yeah. did a sound design, or whatever it is. But I'm not trying to be you. I'm not trying to no. be Brody Moss. I'm not trying to be Gordon Ramsay. I'm me. Yeah. I'm unmistakably me. You are unmistakably you. We, were, we, we talk off camera regularly and it's... No we're, the same pe- we're the same people. Yeah. Um, you need to be sometimes a little bit more on, a bit more succinct on camera than perhaps you would be just, you know, yeah. going for a walk or to having a cup of coffee and chatting. Yeah. Fine. Um, and, you know, you, you'll, you obviously say more private things, which you just don't want the world to know. <laughs> I'm not going to give out your address. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I, I've, I see so many people trying to be full drive 24 seven or trying to be Gordon Ramsay or trying to be this and that. And, and you, it's very obvious that it's not them. So I think that's, that's one aspect of it. Um, another aspect is people, um, who, uh, can't afford to do it. And by that, I mean, they either completely reject any commercial aspect to doing this job. So including people who, who will actually let themselves get quite big on the, on, in their, in their things. And then the company will say to them, you're already running our awning. Can we sponsor you? Just put our name at the end of the video and we'll give you X number of thousands of dollars. And they go, no. You go, it's free money. Are you changing your content? No. Are you, are you, you know, that sort of thing. So some people are actually kind of allergic to money. Um, I've, I've found in, in, some, in some aspects or, or don't know, or they, you know, they'll say, uh, why, why would I sell merchandise? It's just a shirt with my, with my logo on it and now I'm charging 20 bucks more. I feel like I'm robbing people and they, they sort of fail to realise that the reason people want that shirt is the same reason that growing up you wore shirts with your favourite band on them because when you walk down the street and you see another person with that shirt, you go, we think the same. Yeah. We like the same things. We're part of this little group. So that's, that's another part of it that I think that so people just actually can't afford to do it because they, they won't take it. And then, and then there's the opposite where people get into it for the wrong reasons and they're just trying to get paid and they will say anything for anyone for a few bucks and it tanks. So Interesting. those are my sort of, those are the things that I think kill it. Um, and then bad audio. Say that again? Bad audio. Oh, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> on the cliffs of, uh, <laughs> and I can see the sea below. <laughs> All the visuals you want. Beautiful visuals, yeah. well, acceptable visuals, kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So that- <laughs> <laughs> Gwyn will grab a, grab a cell phone uh, to get a, 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 cli- a, a clip while yeah. we're filming, you know, oh, for Instagram. And it's, you know, but I'm hearing... The fact that I have wind in my hair means that that audio is useless. Yeah. And um, it's useless. It's not usable. Yeah. Nice moment. Good idea. Completely useless audio. What do you think makes people not succeed? I think that they... I, all of those things that you mentioned and the fact that they think that uh, YouTube adverts, uh, advertising is going to pay them a yeah. lot of money. Yeah. And as I said before, you got to be... You've got to be a million plus subs yes. to earn a significant amount of money from YouTube. You need a million or so subs. I completely agree. And then, then great. Yes, yeah. I've been I've been on YouTube since two thousand and seven, but I only actually revived my channel and understood YouTube for what it was in two thousand and uh, about thirteen fourteen. Okay. So only then did I say, okay, I'm going to now produce regular content for YouTube, and now I'm what. 290 plus thousand subs. Yeah. Growth has actually been quite slow. Your growth has been remarkably good. 
it's been it's going quite well. Um, yeah, I'm better v- I'm average. very happy. Better yeah, than better than average. Than average. Nearly hundred thousand now. I, actually, yeah, the, I actually started this because I was sick of watching four wheel drive presenters cook bad food. Um, <laughs> And chefs. I was not one of them because no, I never cook on no. camera. And I haven't got a clue. <laughs> no, it was the, the the real offenders were the old school four drive action, and it's just it was terrible food. So I got sick of presenters who were made to do cooking segments, um, and it was because the the, the the two sides of it were that which was the presenters being made to do cooking segments, and the other side of it was chefs who didn't know anything about camping. So the chefs would shop in Narnia, as far as I'm concerned. I didn't know where any of these ingredients came from. They're certainly not from my supermarket. Okay. And then there would be 50 ingredients to make a bloody omelette. And you just think, and, they, and they've got, you know, all these different whiz-bang devices and things. And I just thought, that is so needlessly complicated. So I decided to do something in the middle. And it came, so this this whole thing was born out of frustration with what was, with what currently existed. I watch, <clears throat> I, I don't watch a lot of YouTube. I watch yeah. some aviation shows. Yeah. Uh, Mike Patey builds these insane airplanes. And I watch you. Interesting. I watch you because. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not even interested in I cooking. Keep on, I keep on, you know, it's so, <laughs> so ridiculous. I keep on thinking, saying, gee, that looks good lighting shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Have you, have you noticed I got a new light? Yeah. Especially your early stuff. Especially oh, your early stuff. The early stuff say, was... Oh, no, man. Come on. No, don't do it like that. Yeah. Please don't do it like that. That's a lot better now than it was. Thank you. But, um, um. So I would like to... Uh, if I can challenge you now for our viewers... Um, yeah. I haven't even mentioned this to Harry, but I'm mentioning it now. Um, could we organize a collaboration where you teach me... Because... I'm not a great cook, okay. but I have always said that I do a really good breakfast. Okay. I can do a good breakfast. There you go. Okay. Good. Is it, is it really any good? Okay. Teach me how to cook eggs. Sure. Can Done. we do something like Absolutely. that? Absolutely. And we'll do I'd it love as a to. collaboration. I don't do a lot of cooking stuff on my channel, but no. this could be fun. I agree. And I want to learn how to make those eggs just a little bit better. Absolutely. Can we do that? Yeah, we'll do three kinds. Oh, okay. Let's do it. Okay. We're yeah. Gonna, we're gonna do that in. We're gonna do that in the in the in the near future. Fantastic. I love that. That's that's great. And also, I because I actually really enjoy cooking breakfast. It's sort of a it's a it's a it's a nice part of the day. You're fresh fantastic. and you. Fantastic part of the day because you if you're cooking a good breakfast, it means you've got some time. You don't yeah. have to get in the car and go. Yeah. Which means you, you're in a, you're in chill mode. Yes. Like you are in the evening, but then you're having a morning meal in chill mode. Yeah. That's a really nice meal to have. And that's when I cook a nice breakfast because I've got space and time. Perfect. Uh, I'd love my, to do that. In my, in my car. Great. Right. Right. right we're going to do that. Excellent. So, to conclude, <clears throat> Tasmania... I was going to come and promote your, and I know to you I'm nothing, but to my community I'm something. I'm not coming to Tasmania until you sort yourself out. Yeah. I, I, and, and I was going to come in February. I had planned it. It was in my, in my itinerary. I'm going to do something else instead. Yeah. So. And I, I certainly won't be back until it's sorted. Yeah. That's for sure. And That's for damn sure. <clears throat> All what Parks and Wildlife can do is what they've done for the last, um, what that legislation has been in since 2001, I believe. So for the last 22 years, turn a blind eye to it because they never policed it in the past. So why would they start policing it now? They never cared about wilderness photographers selling um, calendars about their prints that they took in the reserves. They never cared about uh, photographers who use the beach with the wedding couples. Uh, with the bride and groom on their wedding day. This is all, uh, in their eyes, worthy of needing a commercial filming license, right? Because you're monetizing your work on areas that they manage. But for the last 22 years, no one ever got pulled up on it. Why? Because it wasn't worth pulling people up for. Exact same way that that tourism board said, we're not going to come after you. Which brings me again to the point. Why did they come after Levi and I? Well, because they want that little leash around our necks. Because we're out there finding gold. We're out there inspiring people to visit the reserves in a way that's free and liberating and 
having the time of our lives and getting, you know, a lot of support and respect for it. They don't like that. That must be the case. And if you would like to, us to help you sort it in terms of representing YouTubers, I will make my time available. I might not be the best person to do it, but I, I've been in the YouTube game for a long time and I've been in television. So if you would like to contact me and say, hey, we would like to get some insight and understanding to formulate something that will work for everybody, <clears throat> win, 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 I am available. Absolutely. And so am I. Get in touch. Absolutely. Get in touch. And um, my number one bit of advice would be have a look at what New South Wales has done. I think they've nailed the system. 50 bucks a year for a filming permit for a small operator. Right. Perfect. Right. And if you want to get a permit to fly a drone in a national park, it is possible, but it is very heavily controlled. How does that work? Uh, Well, you need the CASA license, which is really expensive. So I think that you should be able to get a permit and use a recreational license yes. um, and follow all the guidelines. Um, and then I, I, don't, I can't see that being an issue, and particularly in Crown Land, um, I think that you should be able to just fly a drone in public areas that aren't national parks, that aren't drone-free zones, because why can anyone else fly it when I can't? That's the thing. Anyone else can fly a drone there because they're not making money off it. Because I'm a commercial operator, I'm not allowed to fly the drone. That's all backwards. Yeah. That's all the wrong way around. Yeah. It's 180 degrees the wrong way around. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, thank you very much, Harry, for your time. Thank you, Andrew. It's been wonderful. Thank you for putting a a spotlight on this because I think it really needs it. It really needs it. It does need it. Thank you for your time, Rob. It's been enlightening, interesting. And so um, I'll send you links and everything to the story before it goes out so you can have a look at it. I'll oh, do a little bit of editing, but uh, yeah, fantastic. Really, really good. Yeah. Cool. Well, I really appreciate you having me on, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. It's great. All right, right. Okay. I'm disappointed. I'm not going to Tassie. Yeah. I was really looking forward to going. Tassie's great. You're... I'm not going to go and fork out three grand for permits. No. And go through that whole nightmare. No. The plant... Australia's a big country. There's yeah. Really nice places to visit. Sure are. That will welcome me with open arms and not make it difficult. For Go on, me. So you, I'm going there instead. You'll love the Vic High Country. Yes, yes. Gwyn, it, it was Gwyn's idea that we do the ta- ta- Tassie. And I'm th- I actually said to her, where could we do instead? Why don't we continue up and do Victoria High Country? She's never seen that and maybe come back. I don't know, an interesting way, not sure. But the point is that it's no longer Tassie. Somebody else will get the benefit. And it's a pity because we really wanted to go. Yeah, no. yeah. I'm, 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 I'm missing out as a fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody, for listening. See you next Sunday. Bye for now. Thank you so much for listening to the Next Adventure podcast with me, Andrew St. Pierre White. To find out more information, check out thenextjourney.net. Join us each Sunday. Again.